Good morning. Welcome to Insomniac Theater. Hey Santa, see you in the corner there. Um, while I get this in focus, this has been something I've been trying to get done all day. Um, it's 1 o'clock in the morning on my time, probably 4 the East Coast, but I'm finally getting a chance to get it done. I don't want to talk about it. Virginia, we're with you. What's going on, folks? You're watching The Hungry Hand Gunner, and I am Nick. Now, I actually thought about doing this video as a Millennial Magduff episode, but I kind of want this information to get out there, so I'm going to try to keep a lot of the you know, profanity and stuff like that out of it. So I think everybody's kind of aware uh, with what's going on in Virginia with their gun control measures and stuff like that. I did post a, a short little episode, 7 Millennial Mag Dump, which I'll put a card up there if you want to check it out. But I was just focusing on one little part of it. Um, so it's, it's pretty drastic gun control proposed measures that they've, they've tried to get through up there. And there's been a lot of counties that have declared themselves sanctuary counties and things like that. Um, sheriffs stepping up to uphold their constitutional oath, things like that. <clears throat> I think it is the single most draconian uh, proposed gun control that I have seen. However, I think that a lot of other states are starting to get emboldened uh, by what they've seen in Virginia. Here in Georgia, we have House or uh, Senate Bill, State Senate Bill 281, that has been pre-filed. It hasn't been passed or anything like that. It hasn't even gone to a committee as of today. But it has been pre-filed, and this bill is pretty crazy. Hey guys, let me stop you there real quick and just let you know this is from yesterday, the 18th, because today's Thursday the 19th. Uh, but it's about Georgia Bill SB 281 and the gun ban, uh, five years in jail. It only has 112 views, so you guys might want to get on this. And the guy's uh, uh, YouTube channel is I Shall Not Be Silent. So, um, yeah, you want to go ahead and I Shall Not Be Silent. All one word. Get on there. Check them out. Back to the show. Happy here to... Uh it would completely ban semi-automatics. Obviously, they mentioned fully automatics in the bill. Those are effectively banned anyway for the most part. But it would ban semi-autos, uh, any magazine holding more than 10 rounds. And perhaps the most unnerving part of this is a lot of times you see this kind of proposed measures that come out, and there's a grandfather clause. So if you already own it, it's fine. You can keep it. And they don't really, you know, they say they don't care about that. Um, this Senate Bill 281 is not that way. It is an immediate ban, no grandfather clause. If you're caught in possession with these, they're wanting a five-year mandatory minimum prison sentence. So it's pretty bad. Um, I would say, you know, oh, you know, that'll never pass, but in this day and age, you, you never know. So what I want my Georgia folks to do, um, most of you that know me personally and watch this channel, um, you all live here for the most part. Contact your state senators, contact your state reps. Um, need to make sure this thing is DOA, that it does not go anywhere. But I also want to talk uh, a little bit more about Virginia. So what we're seeing now is, I think at last count that I saw was 80 out of the 90, uh, 90, maybe 90 something counties in Virginia have already declared themselves to some extent sanctuary counties. And now the Attorney General has said, well, you know, the law is going to be the law. It's going to be enforced. There's been talk of mobilizing National Guard to enforce it. Um, it's not looking good. So what you, you have the whole majority of the state saying, yeah, we don't want this. We didn't vote on this. Um, you know, we're not represented in our vote, I should say. And they're still trying to move forward with it anyway. So I think we're at a critical point as a nation with how far we let things go as far as encroaching on our rights. Uh, I'm not going to recommend any course of action to anybody on this channel. That's not my purview. Uh, but what I would urge you to do is get out, train mentally, physically, spiritually, if that's your thing. You need to kind of be prepared for whatever may happen. Uh, these are not good times that we're living in. So anytime you have a elected official that it's going to talk down to you and tell you how best to protect yourself, your rights, and your family, uh, all the while being armed by security that we pay for through our tax dollars. That's not a good situation. And on the historical timeline, it's kind of easy to see parallels between the early 
1770s and where we're at now. And for anybody that didn't pay attention in history class, it was right before, you know, everything kind of got started that led us to have our own country. So just a little PSA. Um, Virginia folks know that we're watching. We aren't just ignoring what's going on. We're watching carefully. We're trying to spread awareness, uh, trying to keep it from happening in our states. So you're not alone. If there's anything we can do, don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, Georgia folks, contact your state officials. I'm not sure how much good it's going to do, but definitely let them know how you feel about it. Hopefully this bill's DOA and it doesn't go anywhere. So just a quick PSA, no guns, gadgets, whatever, to show you in this video. I think I kept it fairly clean. Um, I may have let something slip. Sometimes a filter doesn't work. So I'm actually going to upload this to Facebook, too. So if anybody wants to share it, then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But alrighty, folks, stay safe, keep shooting, train this week, and I'll see you next time. Later. All right. Yeah, like I said, that guy was, I shall not be silent. Uh, look him up. The next one's going to be coming from, uh, let's see, just who this is coming up from. Everyone, pretty much the Valor Ridge. This is going to be another I Shall Be Not Silent. Same guys. They got 3.7 thousand subscribers, so you guys need to get this out there. Um, all right, Virginia, we're with you recently read an article from BearingArms.com. The synopsis of the entire article is that you have state representative in Virginia who has threatened to deploy the National Guard against communities that have adopted Second Amendment sanctuary resolutions, and it includes county and municipalities. This is a threat from an elected official against the citizens of that state using military force and might and equipment that you pay for with your own taxes to disarm you of your Second Amendment right recognized in the Constitution and guaranteed by God and given by God. Now we've got a major problem here because now you have threats and they're not veiled, they're direct threats. I believe that when representatives do this, they cross the line. This isn't just against the citizens of Virginia. This is against the citizens of the United States of America. And if you think people in Bell County, Kentucky, or Claiborne County, Tennessee, or Lee County, Virginia, are going to tolerate that kind of stuff from happening, you are sorely mistaken. This is no different than General Gage deploying his troops at Lexington and Concord. We're going to disarm you, and we're going to use the military to do it. Tell me what the difference is. One is a decree. It's a decree by Parliament. It's a decree by the Virginia legislature. And if this legislation was so popular, if this legislation was so uh, needed, then why have over 80 counties and municipalities adopted Second Amendment resolutions? Go look at the map. I'll even put a link to Gun Rights Watch, and you can see all the counties there that have adopted such resolutions. There's only 90-something counties in Virginia, and over 80 of them already have adopted Second Amendment sanctuary resolutions. So popularity is not on their side. So in short, what you've got are representatives advocating for up-armored Humvees, APCs, fully automatic weapons rolling right there on Wilderness Road. That's not going to be tolerated. It's not going to be tolerated by law enforcement in this community. It's not going to be tolerated by the citizens of this community. And I want to know if that state representative or the governor of Virginia himself will be at the head of that column. Will they be the one leading that assault? We are living in times where you may not have thought it would ever happen in your lifetime, yet here we are looking tyranny right in the face. We're looking at it just like our ancestors did. And having the ancestors that fought right there in Virginia in the Revolutionary War, and not only the militia but the Continental Army, I can tell you straightforward that uh, my ancestors were willing to fight for that soil once, and uh, I'm more than willing, more than willing, uh, to assist the citizens of Virginia when the time should come. This will be next to Valor Ridge reminding you, the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge. All right, guys. Go to this guy. I'm talking about a Kentucky Democrat. Do these fools He's kind of loud, so I think he's kind of funny. Uh, it's only three minutes. If you need to skip ahead, you can skip ahead. Democrats and full Republicans in Kentucky not pay attention to what went on in Virginia? Hello? Militia? And it's actually from today. Liberty. Freedom. Hello everyone, my name is Virgil Edwards, and as always, you can follow my latest content on Twitter at Real K Y L I B O R T E A. That's at Real K Y 
Lib or Tea. What do these Kentucky liberals and Kentucky so-called Republicans think they're doing? Proposing more anti-Second Amendment legislation. Do they not pay attention to the news? Are they not paying attention to what's happening in Virginia? I mean, most of the counties in Virginia by now have already declared themselves to be sanctuary counties for the Second Amendment. They already have militias. I'm sorry, I keep hitting the button. I mean, Kentucky loves its guns just as much, if not more, than people in Virginia. Do they not honestly think the people of Kentucky of this Commonwealth are not going to band together and tell these idiot politicians to go pound sand? Are, are you kidding me? Pound sand. I'm sorry, but law enforcement in Kentucky is not going to put up with it. Okay? There's not Go ahead and stay tuned and you didn't go forward. The guy's pretty good. The Kentucky National Guard to do anything about it. Not that they would anyway. They aren't going to turn their efforts and guns against their own family and friends. These idiot politicians need to be strung up by their necks. These idiot politicians need to be publicly shamed. And these idiot politicians need to be removed from office to never... And I mean ever run for office ever again. Because quite frankly, I'm sick and tired of these smug, tyrannical wannabe politicians being too damn comfortable of going out in public, of getting on TV, of sitting in their chambers, and pretending that they're going to take away our sovereign natural rights. If you like this video, and I hope you do, please share this. All right. Um, and here we go with a little bit, of, a couple of news clips. You guys in Virginia, you probably see this, but I'm not sure if everybody has. This is DC John of Guns. From the 17th. There you uh, go. A number of counties in the state have passed similar resolutions in response to expected gun control legislation, which Governor Northam says Democrats will push for since it regained control of the Virginia General Assembly. So what does this all mean? What is the breakdown for folks in Culpeper County? And uh, will this reverberate in other parts of the state and Commonwealth? Sheriff Scott Jenkins joins us live this morning. We do want to know. Let's get that trained in there, huh? have already passed similar resolutions to deputize residents, but no counties have uh, passed accepted our invitation. Sheriff, you did. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, first question I, I want to ask you is, you know, the Second, Second Amendment constitutional county, uh, what in your eyes does that entail? That's a gesture by our county board of supervisors to let everyone know that they feel strongly about the proposed legislation that's going to Richmond uh, after the first of the year, as over 70 other counties in the state so far have done the same. So break it down for us in real terms. What are you planning on doing, and, and is it based on action from the, the state legislature first? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Be Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm going to wait. Hopefully the measures that they're, they're hoping to approve won't uh, actually pass and uh, won't be necessary. But if they do enact those laws that they're proposing, uh, restricting everything from what the so-called assault weapons to uh, high-capacity magazines and other things, low on the red flag laws, um, my stance will be to, uh, if need be, if it's passed, swear in hundreds or even thousands of citizens as auxiliary deputies. We have thousands of concealed carry permit holders in the county currently who I have no issue whatsoever and encourage people to have concealed carry permits. But uh, what their intent, what they hope to achieve by this legislation, it, it's not going to happen. Um, the Clinton air gun ban was a proof of that for 10 years. The statistics don't bear anything to prove that it, it's going to be effective. So why they're going to try this bill, which is basically that ban on steroids, it, it's ridiculous. You know, those who don't agree with you, Sheriff, uh, would say 
based on your, your comment right there. Uh, these certain weapons, the high-capacity magazines, uh, those type of, of weapons, uh, some might question why those are necessary, especially from hearing that from someone from a law enforcement background. Well, the fact is the law-abiding citizens that possess them for everything from sports shooting and hunting and other uses are just home defense. It's uh, Those aren't the people that we're, we're having the problems with. Criminals are going to obtain those weapons regardless of what laws are passed, and it's ridiculous to think that it's going to have any effect on the actual crime. Uh, they like to spout uh, figures, statistics on shooting deaths and, and uh, crime with uh, various types of weapons, but when you really drill down and look at the statistics for what they are, um, they just don't bear what they, they say they will. There are others who might say that, that your job, Sheriff, is to enforce the law, not make the law or make changes to the laws, or uh, as some might even say, circumvent the law. Uh, by making changes and not listening to what's happening down in Richmond. So how do you respond to that? I'll be clear about that. I'm not circumventing the law. As a matter of fact, unlike sheriffs all over the Commonwealth or the United States who said they won't uh, enforce laws that are passed, I have been the first so far. I think the only one who has said, I will not say that I won't enforce laws that are really passed. I said when I originally announced, elections have consequences, and this is what we're getting the result of that election. But... Yep. I do have a legal right to swear in deputies, and that's been the same for hundreds of years here in the Commonwealth for any sheriff. And others might say uh, that might be okay for a handful. And of others people. might that's say hundreds or thousands. That sounds like a militia in the making. And uh, others you might know, say you're screen, picking on the guy. The same citizens that I currently serve and put me in office, and they're the ones that I deserve everything that I can to my power to protect them and, and protect their constitutional rights. It's, it's my duty, Sheriff. We do appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, one. Off-topic question for you since you came in from Culpeper this morning. How were the roads? Uh, a little icy when we got closer into D.C., but uh, not too bad overall. All right, Sheriff Jenkins, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. This is D.C. Jumping Yeah, it's my opinion that you're a Durka. Same guy. From 17th. Our hundreds rallying right now for Stafford County to become a Second Amendment sanctuary. Now, this is a meeting that starts in 45 minutes. Victoria Sanchez is there tonight with what this vote means. And Victoria, you know, quite an atmosphere out there. There are a lot of people showing away. This recording has been repeated. Yeah, absolutely. There is only room for 130 people. And I have to estimate that this crowd is probably past 1,000 people. And I'm being told that they're expecting even more to come out. Now, right now, everybody is gathering. Some people will get seats inside. Some people will have to be outside waiting to have their voices heard. We did hear from the chair of the Board of Supervisors who says everyone who wants to speak will be given the chance. Thank you. It's not often a Board of Supervisors meeting draws a crowd with music and food trucks. But in Stafford, gun rights activists say they hope their county becomes sanctuary for the Second Amendment. Make them aware that, hey, we're here and we're not going to stand for this. Organizer Scott Beaumont says his grassroots effort is an attempt to preempt gun-restricted legislation. The Democratic General Assembly vows to pass. Take away my right to protect myself? What are they thinking? That's not freedom. The majority what of the are they is thinking? For a Second Amendment sanctuary designation, but not all. Do not poke a finger in the eye of our democratically elected representatives who themselves are under pressure to do something about this epidemic of violence. <laughs> with flags, stickers, and speakers, this group hopes the supervisors stand with them. Giving up my guns is against my religion. <laughs> Okay, so that's two days ago. I got one last one for you real quick. Let me squeeze it in. The message was clear at City Hall in Virginia Beach. A large group wants the city to be declared a Second Amendment sanctuary. I believe deep December 6th. Constitutional rights, my Second Amendment rights to protect my family and my property, and I don't think they should be infringed. But right now, the laws have only been proposed. Nothing's been passed. We asked a political science professor at ODU, Dr. Ben Molusky, why the groups are so vocal already. They're trying to get out ahead of it, and I think um, this is one of those issues where we can galvanize the public. The groups say they're worried about bills proposed by the newly elected Democratic majorities in the Virginia General Assembly. 
They want their local governments to say they won't enforce stricter gun laws, but analysts say the resolution is non-binding. This is really all the localities do, is just basically offer some sort of resistance. One of the bill's Second Amendment advocates are worried about is Senate Bill 16, which would expand the definition of an assault weapon and make their possession and sale illegal. Whether, you know, this is the actual complete ban on assault weapons, that's what uh, 16 actually makes it through, uh, I think we'll have to wait and see kind of what the, the narrative surrounding it is. And a local state delegate has asked the Attorney General, Mark Herring, to weigh in on sanctuaries. A spokesperson for Herring says his opinion is still pending, but says the resolutions appear to be just symbolic. Omoluski says guns will be a major topic in Richmond this upcoming year. Given that this was uh, essentially the number one issue on people's minds going into the election, um, you can always argue that he has a mandate to address this. And people on the other side clearly feel like they have their own mandate. In Norfolk, Brendan Pontine, News 3. Alright, and what, with that... And with that, I'm going to put an end to this insomniac theater. Brandon, everybody in Virginia, we love you. We're praying for you. Stay sharp. Stay safe. Uh, share this with others. And if you got some stories you want to give to me, and I can get it on the video and put it out there. I got a little bit of time. Let me, let me have it. Let me do it. Let's get it done. Okay? Love you. Pray for you always. What, do I, what am I supposed to say at the end? Oh yeah, like and subscribe.